Ah, uh, type in listings. Back in the 1980s, if you had a computer and you wanted to get a new game for it, you could always go out and buy one just as you would do today. But there was another avenue available to those of us who were perhaps a little short on cash, but with some time to spare. You could pick up a magazine for a fraction of the price and try your hand at typing in the published source code instead. It's pretty much a lost art today, but there was something really rather special about sitting down at your machine for a few hours, typing in lines and lines of code, and then seeing a fully fledged game materialize before your very eyes. Okay, scratch that. Of course, you would have spent hours and hours debugging the code to iron out all of the typos first, but the point remains. However, have you ever wondered exactly how those games really worked? Well, I have, so I thought that I would put together this series of videos and take an example of one of these type in listings, pull it apart and uncover the inner workings of the program. In the process, I'll be explaining how a simple arcade style 8-bit computer game is constructed, what all of the code is actually doing, and how you can use these listings to create your very own games. Um, as my test subject for this series, I'm going to be using Cosmic Invaders, which was a Space Invaders style game written by Mark Buckwell. Uh, this game was originally published in a great collection of type in listings called The Giant Book of Games for Your BBC Micro by Tim Hartnell and Ian Hutt. Um, I've chosen this game for several reasons. Uh, first, it's written entirely in BBC Basic. This means that we don't need to delve into the world of 6502 assembly code, exciting though that is, um, and therefore we only need to work within a single programming language for the purposes of the series. Secondly, uh, it's based on a well-known arcade game, so it should look and feel reassuringly familiar. And finally, it's got a good selection of graphics, sound effects, and overall procedural magic to provide a pretty decent overview of the various techniques that you need to program an 8-bit game. Now, in this first video, we're going to start off pretty slow and just focus on what the essential ingredients are for building an arcade game in BBC Basic. 8-bit games are, generally speaking, built from four core components. There are variables which are really just things that the computer needs to remember. And then there are procedures and functions, which are chunks of code that the computer must carry out at certain intervals. Then there's a logical flow that calls those procedures in the right sequence at the right time. And then finally, you've got loops, which ensure that the same operation can be carried out multiple times and sometimes indefinitely, what is sometimes referred to as an infinite loop. Now, in fact, the entire computer game is contained with, within one infinite loop, which will never end until or unless the player chooses to end it. Now, using these four components, you can pretty much create whatever kind of game you like. First, you decide what kind of game it's going to be. In the case of Cosmic Invaders, it's an arcade shooter. Now, given that it is an arcade game, you need to figure out what the individual items will be within that game. So there's the player, usually represented by a spaceship or a gun turret of some sort. There's some aliens who need to be blasted into oblivion, uh, a score to keep track of how many aliens have been blasted into oblivion, uh, probably a life counter to show how many lives the player has left, unless you're going to be really uh, unpleasant and only give the player one life, missiles that the player can fire and bombs that the aliens can drop, and probably some sort of defensive shields as well that the player can hide underneath. Now, all of these need their own variables so that the computer knows what they are and what values it should store in those variables. After all, a variable is really just a placeholder for a particular value. That's really all a variable is. Now, some of those values are going to be fixed, which means you define them once and you can pretty much forget about them. You don't need to change the value, you just need to refer to it periodically and the same piece of information will be returned every time. But other variables will change throughout the course of the game, like the positions of the player, the aliens, the missiles and the bombs. And to modify the values of those variables, you need some procedures that can be called to update the values of the variables. And then finally, you need some logic to stitch all of that together so that the values of the variables that need changing are changed at the appropriate time. After all, you don't want your player to lose a life when they successfully hit an alien with their missile. <laughs> 
Now that logic of what happens when is the overall flow of the program and it can often be helpful to visualize this in the form of a flowchart. Now by throwing in some loops to that flow you can ensure that the program repeats certain sections multiple times without having to keep writing new code to perform the same actions. And really that's the true power of a loop and indeed the power of computers generally. They're really good at repetitive tasks and one line of code to call a procedure saves many lines of code rewriting what that procedure already does. Cosmic Invaders is a great example of all four of these concepts working together. The type in listing begins by defining a bunch of variables that either need to remain static throughout the game or which will require some initial values which will then later change. It then defines some parent procedures which effectively control the overall flow of the game before finally listing out all of the child procedures that those parent procedures will call at various intervals. Now without complicating things too much, it's fair to say that some of these child procedures should more properly be called functions. And a function is very much like a procedure, except that it behaves a little bit differently. So rather than just executing some code, it returns a value. For example, you might want to have a function that tells you whether an alien is alive or dead. So the function would return true if the alien is alive and false if the alien is dead. That's all the function is really doing. It's providing some element of efficiency to the program. So they're used when you want to repeat the same check in multiple different places throughout the program. And in Cosmic Invaders, there are a small number of functions and they're all called by one or more procedures as and where they are needed. Throughout this series, I'll be using a few different tools to explain different aspects of the code, but as much as possible, I'll be focusing on either the code itself or the effects of the code. So when examining the code, I'll be using Richard Russell's excellent BBC Basic for Windows code editor, because that helps to color code the keywords in BBC Basic. And then all demos of the code in action will be done using the BBEM emulator, which is my personal favorite emulator for the BBC Micro. In the next video, we're going to take a look in more detail at the variables that are defined at the start of the program. This will give us a good understanding of the variable types and how they can be used to define everything from high scores to graphics. I hope that you found this first video informative. I hope that it's perhaps piqued your interest and that you'll join me for the next few videos in the series. But until then, goodbye.